Good evening. It's Tracy Prachu with the RCAW, and we're so glad to have you at our October biannual meeting. Tonight we have Erin Thompson from Safety Matters Training Institute, and she's got a few words to say, and unfortunately her webcam is not working, so she's just going to be talking, and you're going to be um, seeing me, I guess. And then um, we have Ryan Groth with us for our keynote speaker tonight, and he's with Sales Transformation Group, and we're really excited to have him, and he's got some great words for you. As the time goes on and you have questions, please feel free to put your questions in um, the question section, and when we get to the end, then I will be coming back on and talking with Ryan and giving him all your questions, and he'll be able to answer them. So I'm going to go ahead and let Erin take over, and um, she's going to be talking to you a little bit about our Lunch and Learn series that Safety Matters has for the next um, two, two times, and they've got some really important things to share with you. Erin? So good evening, everybody. Thank you for having me. Um, Jennifer Richards is my boss with Safety Matters. And I've been working for Jennifer for about the last four years now. And so she's asked me to sit in for her on these uh, lunch and learns and, and this evening to talk to you about this new unified fall protection code. And so uh, I'm, I'm really passionate about fall protection. It's one of my favorite classes to train. In the last four years, uh, I've trained a lot of competency classes a lot of OSHA 10, a lot of OSHA 30 classes, and, uh, and fall protection is probably my favorite class to be teaching. So I was really involved and really interested in these new changes that were gonna be coming about to our, our WAC codes, our Washington Administrative Codes. So I thought tonight I would just do a quick little introduction and kind of give you a, a brief history as to why L and I decided to make some changes to the fall protection code in case you were not aware or you did not have the opportunity to become previously involved in some of the stakeholder meetings that Ellen and I had uh, in 2016, 2017, Ellen and I had several stakeholder meetings uh, to discuss some of the changes that they were gonna propose to the fall protection code. So the, the history that goes into this is ultimately we are a state plan state, right? That's why we follow the LNI WAC codes. And in order to remain a state plan state, we have to either meet or at least exceed, meet or exceed the OSHA federal regulations, the OSHA CFRs, the Code of Federal Regulations. And ultimately, when it comes to fall protection in the construction industry, we, are, we're, we were not very good at meeting or exceeding some of OSHA's standards. So in 2013, June of 2013, and then again in October of 2015, DOSH, the Department of Occupational Safety and Health, they received a, a few letters, a few choice letters from OSHA asking us to potentially take a look at some of our verbiage and some of our requirements when it came to residential construction standards, and they felt that they differed significantly from their own policies and standards. Some of their policy issues uh, focused on the following areas. They felt that there was ambiguous language with regard to our skylights and our wall openings, the use and the strength of, of warning lines. There was alternatives to conventional fall protection that they were a bit kind of confused about, and that was mainly in regard to our use of catch platforms and then our safety watch systems. Trigger heights with OSHA, they have two trigger heights ultimately when it comes to fall protection, zero feet and at six feet. This is when you have to protect your workers. And in Washington State, we had quite a few more trigger heights than just zero, zero and six feet. So uh, LNIs and DOSH, their goal moving forward was to have a chapter 296155 WAC. They wanted it to be at least as effective as those administered by OSHA or as required by the, the Washington State Plan. So in the lunch and learns, the things that we're going to be talking about were some of the concerns that, that OSHA actually had for us. So they had concerns about our trigger heights. 
Washington has a 10 foot trigger height regarding conventional fall protection. They felt it was not at least as effective as OSHA's general six foot trigger height in construction. So they asked us to look at some changes for that and Washington made a, a significant change when it came to our trigger heights. They were concerned about some of the alternatives for conventional fall protection. First, Washington's requirements appear to allow an exemption from conventional fall protection for certain short-term work. This is conducting repair work or servicing equipment on low sloped roofs if employers were to use a safety watch system. So we allowed something that was a safety watch, which was a one-to-one, -one, one person doing the repair or servicing, one person watching them. And uh, OSHA said that wasn't necessarily meeting their requirements. They allow a safety watch, but uh, in addition, you have to have a safety monitor system and a warning line if you're going to allow something like that. And work needs to be done behind the warning line at least 15 feet from the edge. So as such, OSHA did not consider Washington's safety watch system requirement to be at least as effective as their federal standards. And then secondly, the Washington standard permitted catch platforms. Catch platforms have always been something kind of unique to Washington state. Alternatively, a conventional fall protection, you could use a catch platform for leading edge work. And the OSHA standard explicitly does not permit catch platforms. So they were kind of confused why Washington state would allow this. But OSHA does allow an interpretation that permits catch platforms as long as they comply with scaffolding requirements. Now, why would they want it to comply with scaffolding com uh, requirements? And that was because in scaffolding, there's a strength requirement. Your scaffold has to be able to maintain four times the intended load that's going to be imposed upon it. So our catch platforms did not have a strength requirement, and OSHA found that quite odd. So it was unclear to OSHA whether Washington had established minimum requirements for catch platform strength and stability. So that's a change that came about. They had a little bit of confusion with our warning line criteria. OSHA standard requires employers who rely on a warning line system for low sloped roofing, that's you guys, low sloped roofing work, to also use a safety monitor. And in addition, the Washington standard differed from OSHA's in that our warning line strength requirement was only 200 tensile pounds of strength, 200 pounds of tensile strength, meaning pulling apart strength. And OSHA's warning line had a requirement of 500 pounds of tensile strength. So there's a very clear example of where we did not even come close to meeting OSHA requirements and standards. So they wanted us to take a look at our warning line. And then one of the last things that they asked us to do was take a look at some of the ambiguous language that they felt was in our standards. So quite honestly, guys, when, when it comes down to it, some of the ambiguous language is a, is a bit semantic, and that's really what it was. It was verbiage. They didn't like some of our verbiage, the way that we worded things. They didn't like that we used the numbers three zero for 30 inches or the numbers one eight for 18 inches, and they asked us to, to literally spell those out, T-H-I-R-T-Y, 30 inches. Under the WAC 296, uh, 16 for floor holes, we wrote in our standard, a floor hole was something into which persons could accidentally walk and that those must be guarded. OSHA was concerned that this language may have the effect of placing the burden on compliance officers to establish that an unguarded fall hazard presented a danger. So they asked us to clear up some of our language our ambiguous language. So these issues, they've been under discussion for quite a few years, since 2013 actually, we've been discussing changes to our fall protection code. And so OSHA said, as you know, these issues have been under discussion for several years. 
While we recognize that the rulemaking process in Washington can be lengthy, we ask that the state initiates this process at its earliest opportunity. Ultimately, OSHA kind of threw a little, a little bone to us and threw a little nugget at us. And they said, you know, guys, if you don't start to take this seriously and make some changes to your fall protection code, we may have to start think about pulling some of your federal funding. And boy, howdy, they got uh, Dosh's attention because nobody wants their federal funding pulled out from underneath them. And, and perhaps you guys won't be able to remain a state plan state if you don't make some of these changes that we've been asking you to make. So since 2016, DOSH started to propose changes to the fall protection code. Ultimately, they decided that there was going to be two trigger heights. We were gonna jump down to zero and four feet, two trigger heights, period. And they decided that they were gonna unify the, the fall protection code and, and try and make it a little bit more clear for employers as to when and how they need to protect their employees. And they decided that instead of all of the industries out there having different rules for fall protection, they were gonna unify it. And when they decided to unify it, they looked at some of the codes out there and they decided that the easiest thing to do would be to basically adopt the construction, residential construction fall protection across all industries. Because ultimately in construction, we were considered to be the strictest when it came to regulations for fall protection. So that's where we stand today. The Unified Fall Protection Code is now 296-880 instead of 296-155, a part C-1. And it's no longer just specific to construction or maritime or agriculture or fixed industries. It is a unified fall protection code. It falls under the 800s, which is general industries. And every industry out there has to comply with the same codes. This makes it much easier for everybody to know exactly where to look for their codes and what is required of them. So in our lunch and learns, we're gonna talk about first, you know, the first lunch, I believe, I'll probably end up discussing some of the definition changes that we were asked to make. There have been some definitions. They've changed some verbiage, so we'll discuss some of the verbiage changes that were made, some of the strength requirement changes. And then in the second portion of this, we'll probably talk a little bit more about uh, the warning line system, the safety monitor system, uh, covering our floor holes, our roof, our skylights, our roof hatches, since we're all roofers out there, we'll discuss some of the pertinent things that are applicable to uh, our industry. All right, so that's what we'll be doing. Again, I appreciate so much the opportunity to be able to speak to you. Hopefully by 1027, I believe that's the first lunch, I'll have figured out how to get this camera working and you can see my beautiful little mug smiling at you from somewhere. And uh, if there's no questions, I'll turn it back over to Tracy. Again, thank you all so much for allowing me to have the opportunity to speak to you. I'm very passionate about fall protection. So I really am looking forward to have the opportunity to discuss these, these new changes with you all. Thank you. Thanks, Aaron. That was great. And it's good to hear from you. And yes, we will figure out your webcam before 1027. And Aaron will be with us on 1027 and 1110 at 11 a.m. for our Lunch and Learns, which are free to our members and um, $15 if you're a non-member. And that'll be some great information. They're no longer than 45 minutes. So you can grab your lunch, sit down and learn something that's very important for your business. Next, we have with us uh, Ryan Groth from Sales Transformation Group, and there he is. Hey, Ryan. And I'm going to switch presenters and turn this on over to him and get your screen share up, too. All right. Let me see if I can screen share it here. All right. Show my screen. You should be good. Can yes. you see my screen? All right. Yep, and I'm gonna hop off and I'll see you when it's time for questions. All right, thank you, Tracy.
Okay, well, what's going on, Arka, my friends up in Washington? Great to see many of you. I, I know some of you, many of you I don't know. So I'm really glad to have some time with you guys today. And I'm going to be presenting on stepping up your virtual sales game. If you think that's interesting and you can't wait to hear what I have to say, say something in the chat box. I want to make sure that we're awake tonight. Hit me with a little chat and say, yes, yeah, I'm excited. I can't wait to learn something. Say something fun in the chat. Just stay alive here, folks. Stay alive. Here we go. Um, all right. Anything here? Okay, I'm gonna get rid of my my webcam because it's in my way. So I'm gonna go. Okay. All right. Right on. Okay, everybody should be able to see everything nicely now. So we're gonna talk about stepping up your sales game on the virtual side. I'm sure this is uh, handy information for some of you, and I cannot wait to dive in. Let's see if here. There you go. So who is this for? Well, this is for you if you're a contractor making sales, but you're often competing with contractors battling over price. Sound like you? You travel too far, or you travel far for a lead to find out it wasn't a very good one, and you wasted precious time. You're using some technology, but you know you can squeeze more juice out of each lemon, aka squeeze more out of each opportunity every time someone sees your truck a brand just your brand in the marketplace we want to be able to squeeze the most juice out of the lemon what i mean by that is get the most opportunity out of what we've been given right like what we create and that's it um you want more volume without it eating at your margins you want to remain relational though with prospects when you go virtual you don't want to lose the connection right but you don't want to rely on face-to-face -face meetings either and you want a sales process that's strong and scalable and you want to be the best. This is for you. Here's what we already know. Technology is here, but many are late to the race. Humans are slow and make mistakes, right? But machines, they're always on. They don't mess up as much. You know, humans can make a lot of mistakes. And not using technology is kind of like texting on a flip phone uh, or traveling a, a thousand miles by a horseback versus a plane. If you're not using technology right now, uh, you've heard this for the last 10 years you're nuts and you, you know if you're still in business I'm, I'm i'm happy for you but each time technology is being put into roofing the landscape changes okay the the entire industry is getting better and better and you're becoming uh, more and more behind and so you're relying on your great relationships and brand but at the same time people are doing a lot more than that because they have the tools and the technology to do so um, and so we're going to talk about that uh, automation should repeat tasks that humans uh, that are already doing versus doing the same tasks over and over. So automation is, is simply the way you should look at automation is how can this repeat what we do more than once? If we do every time and it's consistent with our process, it needs to be automated. And that just changes everything. And humans, we should be creating those automations or creating those new things so that we can have a lot of fun and, by growing our business. I mean, we're creative people. If we can create, everything's great. We create value, we create relationships, we create deals, we create uh, new team members, we create a culture. We shouldn't be doing tasks over and over and over and over. It's kind of like, it's just, it's just like, especially as owners and entrepreneurs, that shouldn't be what we're doing. And your, and your leaders shouldn't be doing that. So you want to get from your current to your desired situation faster and easier, period. So what do we really want? Well, our current sales situation is this likely too many tire kickers wasting your time you take forever to speak with them and reach the sales milestones to get people to actually buy from you and buy your value uh you, you're spending like you know a lot of time 35k at least a year with getting someone who's to manually input data and pre-qualify which maybe you don't even do at all you may not even pre-qualify at all and you may not even put the data in a crm at all until way later or if it's in the it's in, it's in the accounting system, but it's because you uh, you build them. You know all the front end stuff, the leads, the tracking, the pipeline doesn't happen. A lot of you guys don't do that. You're only relying on reviews and salespeople uh, to build value versus tech. You're not leveraging technology. You got a website, but there's way more that can be done uh, with technology. Your comp company manually enters data way too much, and you feel like you're driving a four cylinder SUV putzing around versus driving a rocket ship. All right, so what do we really want? We want tech to weed out the tire kickers that are just shopping on price. That'd be sweet, right? Yeah, we don't have to do that manually. Sweet. Appointments are booked automatically. No data entry. Well, wow, you're telling me that we can automatically get appointments booked? Yeah, sure. We can do that. 
prospects can see the evidence before meeting with the salesperson to see and build a value. That'd be pretty awesome. And the sales team can have more appointments and not be on the road meeting over Zoom, asking great questions, building the value, building the value, and then spending time with qualified opportunities who are committed to doing something right the first time or doing it right this time with you. That'd be amazing. And then salespeople uh, use technology to inspect and generate proposals on the first or the second call. That'd be pretty fantastic. Yep, it sure would. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what's called uh, from stranger to evidence. I know it's like, what is this talk? What does that mean? Is this like a, a like a sitcom or is this like a new movie on Netflix? <laughs> no, it's uh, it's 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 what we can visualize when we're taking somebody who's ice cold, who's never seen us, never heard of us from Adam. And then all of a sudden they move from that all the way to a super duper happy customer who's gotten great results with you. That, and that, therefore they're called evidence. Evidence is, hey, I proved to you and I proved to him and I proved to her and I proved to them that we are awesome and we give people great results and our clients love us and they are happy. All right, so the stranger starts here. It's ice cold, no relationship at all, nothing. And then they realize the need and you came to mind. Okay, there's a few different ways in which that happens. They reach out and raise their hand, like we call that a, a suspect. All right, and then they have a problem with a compelling reason to fix it. So that's where we start to get juicy and it gets exciting. And so they're at their, they're on their phone. They're like, oh man, should I look at the Marlarkey shingle or the GAF shingle, or, or should I do the flat roof? Uh, I'm sorry, the, the the TPO or the mod bit. Like I, maybe I don't even know what any of this is. I, I need to talk to a roofer. Like, come on, like who's available? I, I guess I'd maybe I'll leave a voicemail. Maybe they call me back on Monday morning. Maybe I'll, let me call a few of them, right? Okay, so they're there. They're like hooked. So here's what they got to do. They got to be ready to fire their old way of doing things and realize a new future that you understand. What is the old way of doing things? Well, A is not doing anything. B is hiring their brother-in-law or the maintenance guy to do it. Four or three could be um, hiring that cheap local chuck in a truck that your real estate agent knows who does things for cheap, uh, but they don't really depict it. And then the fourth is, you know, we use a pretty good contractor. If it's commercial, we, they, we use a pretty, they use a pretty good contractor, but they're dropping the ball, right? And we want better results. For them to move to evidence, they gotta be ready to fire their old way of doing things. Understand because you're speaking their language. All right, and their commitment level is so high that if anyone understands them, they're ready to buy and spend more to do it. So they sign the contract, they're willing to spend the more to work with you, they're fully committed, they take and park, take and engage in a great customer experience. They're huge advocates, long-term partners, case study, reviews, social proof material, bang, bang, boom. So this is what we have in terms of the stranger to evidence process. So I'm gonna talk about, oh, here's my little happy family here at the bottom. Um, then we're done. Let me talk about what are the vehicles to achieve these milestones. What do I mean? Well, if I go from ice cold to the, to the red, to the green, right? So ice cold, red meaning, uh, yellow, blue meaning ice cold, red meaning it's time for uh, some juicy stuff to happen. They're hot and heavy, ready to go. And then green means that money and everyone's happy, right? So here are the vehicles. Outbound prospecting, word of mouth, paid advertising, your reviews, the trucks, the signs. It gets them to say, I don't even know who that such and such company is. Uh, Casey, Axis, what? what? What company is that? And they're like, oh, I know that company. And then, so one of these vehicles made that happen, right? That's marketing, that's branding. And then they reach out. Now, they to get to that compelling reason to fix it, they're really ready to fire their old way, fire their old way, and their commitment level is high. There's a few things that need to happen. Some of it's technology. One is called a VSL. VSL stands for Video Sales Letter. Okay, video sales letter is a video sales letter. <laughs> exactly what it's supposed, what it sounds like. No, no, let me just break that down for you. It's a it's a video that you guys use to say, hey, here's who this is for. We know your problems. Point A, pain point A, pain point B, pain point C, pain point D. And then here's the impact, here's the consequences. Hey, there's a better way. We understand that way. Here's our process. And they're like, wow, these guys have a great customer experience. And then they're like, Case study, case study, case study, case study. And they're like, wow, these people work with people just like me. And they seem to be getting great results with such and such contracting company. I'm really excited about that. That could be a 10 minute video. All right. And then we have the forms. So forms is a software. We, I like JotForm. It's my favorite. JotForm is a way for you to basically get what the lady at the front desk would do, which is, hey, ma'am, tell me a little bit about your situation. 
How bad is the problem? Where do you live? What's your address? All that good stuff, right? So when you ask those questions and they fill it out in the form, the people who really want to buy are going to fill out that form, right? They're ready to move. And then who, the people who take, I'm sorry, the, the humans or the, the sales team is when it comes in, when they're ready to like get the questions asked to get people really hot and heavy. I'm talking like they're ready, all right? And so the sales team does that. Automated booking does it faster in the case study. So all these are vehicles to get that red to be just turned up, baby. I'm talking turned up. And then the vehicles here, it's pretty easy. Get a contract signed. I think you guys all have contracts, right? So I'm, I'm pretty sure you do. Contracts, you know how to take money and you know how to record a case study or get a case uh, testimonial. So that is awesome stuff. So these are the vehicles to achieve these milestones. The cool part is, Many of you guys are relying on only the, the manual ones. You're not doing anything to tighten up the steps and make it really succinct. And they're just drawn out and long and not even maybe happening at all. So therefore your business is, is suffering, right? You're, you're, you gotta get, in order to grow your business, you gotta go from the blue to green as many and as fast as you possibly can if you wanna grow it, right? So it's just, that's if you wanna grow it. Some people don't wanna grow. I, I'm, I'm a grow guy, I'm a growth guy. So I'm always thinking about growing. It's just part of my DNA and I love it. And so some people like the growth. They like the, the extra freedom of time. They like the finances. They like the, the extra, uh, the, the empowering of leaders. They like the impact they can make. They like the ability to give back. I mean, all that stuff can happen if you have an awesome business. That's like the, I love this business. You guys in roofing, before consulting, I was like, I think I'm going to either open up a roofing business or get into consulting because I love the, how, much, how much fun this is. Consulting is what I decided to do, and I think it's a little less complicated than what you guys have to do, but yet it is a, a whole lot of fun, and it sets you free to do a lot of things. So I'm going to talk about a couple of steps in the process and how the technology can be applied. First, inbound. What does that mean? Well, they're on your website to call. They're on your website to fill out a request to form. It's just basically inbound. I run a paid ad. I go, to a, I go to a page. Inbound is inbound, right? It came in. So how does that happen? First, ads, branding, word of mouth, pop-ups, things that drive them to your site, right? And then we call them to action. I like to call it a quiz page. You route them to a quiz page, which is short for the word questionnaire. And it's basically a five to you know, 15, 20 question questionnaire that you build. It's easy and dynamic. So now they're basically investing the time to pre-qualified. It's super fun. The quiz page weeds out the tire kickers, because guess what? Those tire kickers, all they want to do is just get a quick price from you. They don't really want to do anything about it. They don't want to actually spend more money to work with you and get a great product and get a great customer experience and be safe. They don't want to do that. They just want to get a quick price. And then if you're cheap, they're going to maybe hire you and then complain about it and give you a bad review if you're late. Like these, That's what we want to weed out. And I can tell you, if you just get more and more good clients, you get more and more and more good clients because the good clients tell other people that are good uh, that you're good. And that's what we want. We want the top of the market. And that's where the margins are, that's where the cash flow is, that's where the, the good stuff is. So we would love to weed out tire kickers all day long. And then the questionnaire page also has a compelling set of evidence, right? We did case studies, it's just so powerful. So then you do that, the video sales letter to kind of walk through your process and helps them understand that you know their pain points. And then you maybe have some demo videos of how we do such and such, maybe it's a malarkey video or a GAF video or whatever video. And, and that's it. Maybe you use some of that in your system. Maybe it's just like talking about your team. I mean, you have some fun. So after submitting the questionnaire, which doesn't take anything but more than like a minute or two, they can immediately book a one hour consultation or a 15 minute consultation with a rep that's on the team calendar. And we use Calendly for that, it's super fun. So after booking, they're routed to your thank you page or they have invitation to uh, look at more of the evidence. And then, the appointment is handled so that appointment's pre-qualified, they're engaged, invested, they're engaged, and they've already seen some stuff. They're excited. I mean, they're like ready to see what you guys are all about. You have their attention. Now, the rep isn't trying to like coerce somebody who's a tire kicker or who's got 25 quotes. They're they're talking to you. I mean, they're talking, they're look, they're like, hey, Mr. Sales Rep, we're excited to see you. The company looks awesome. Sales rep asks more questions, engages, doesn't take too long, but it takes enough time to really care and show what's going on, and then they can. Uh, close deals at a higher rate and a shorter sales cycle. All the while, your CRM ought to be ex allowing all those questionnaires and bookings to go right in and create opportunities in a CRM so it's not manual. So this can all exist. This is amazing. 
uh, and we can get reporting out of CRM, all that stuff can happen. It's very, very fun. So that's the ins inside sales process, okay? I hope I'm not overwhelming you guys. This is a lot, but hopefully I'm teaching you guys the power of why we need to use technology. I'm not gonna go tell you, here's all the tech you should use. You're gonna drop your draw. I want you to say, oh, that makes sense. I could see the power of it. It's not so scary after all. I'm just taking something manual and making it automatic. And when I do that, it's a lot of fun. So let's talk about the outbound sales process, some steps. So this is if you're an inside sales team or outside sales team. If it, you know, outside means uh, commercials, networking, business development, door knocking, cold calling. Inside is they're just working inside, sending out emails, sending out case studies, and uh, making phone calls. Okay. So the salesperson generates the lead, networking, introduction, referral, door knocking, outbound email, cold calling, social media message. Those are the ways they can do it. They conduct a discovery call and identify needs over the phone or in Zoom. In person, it's totally cool too, of course, but I know that Seattle traffic is gnarly, okay? I'd rather be doing it over the phone and connect to them and then get somewhere because that long drive is no fun. Um, ask questions consultatively. That's what the salespeople need to do. They need to get to their compelling reason to buy over the phone or in person or on Zoom, period. They schedule an inspection and a proposal delivery. Bang, bang, boom. It's estimator or they estimate it. They send that video sales letter, the process video, the testimonials, really build that rapport with the prospect's pain. And uh, they use Zoom in an in-person to present proposal, leverage great proposal software. Hopefully it looks really professional. Uh, decisions made, metrics automatically updated in CRM. We have some analytics, things are fun. And uh, we just repeat, increase volume and keep improving through coaching. So there's some inbound uh, tools that I like to use. So one of them is ClickFunnels or WordPress. If you want to, if you know WordPress or have a WordPress person, you can have all this done on WordPress if you want. This is where you host the video sales letter and the questionnaire. Um, Zapier makes us happier. That's their tagline and it ties everything together. So you can get a bunch of things in the Zapier network that ties all of it together and it's a lot of fun. I use JotForm for the questionnaires, AKA quiz. This is the best way to pre-qualify people and you want to spend your, I mean, I'd rather spend less time with better leads than more time with junky leads right? Because guess what? When I get a good lead and they close, I'm going to get more people like that good lead. And it's just going to attract more and more people like that. Referrals and uh, best practice uh, sharing. Uh, sorry. Uh, referrals and case studies and testimonials and reviews. Uh, Facebook ads are also a, an incredibly powerful tool. If you're not using Facebook to run ads, uh, you need to. It's seriously, they've actually made that software to be the most addictive thing on the planet and then monetize that addiction okay so they literally are the best on the planet with getting you to get your ad dollars to the right people to actually do something it's insane what they built it is like an absolute machine and uh it, it's it's incredible if you have good video good copy and good process you can print money if you just spend the money on on ads it's a little scary at first but you can do it uh, Wistia is my favorite for uploading video sales letters and I just video sales letters you can use zoom or you can record it professionally uh, zoom good, does a good job just getting you started and you can use PowerPoint for that uh, and just with some images and screenshots it's pretty straightforward uh, for residential you can do it 15 minutes for commercial I think you do a little longer especially if you're doing really intense jobs and you're really complex and it's really technical you're gonna want to uh, educate and bring some pain to that prospect because they're gonna spend a lot of money with you on a re-roof and if they don't, they're spending a lot on, on uh, maintenance. Uh, I use Calendly for team the team event feature for the team appointment bookings. And I use Google or Outlook Calendar. Obviously, you got to use your calendar. If you're not using a calendar, you're not a salesperson. I'll tell you right now, because salespeople are just ruthless about their calendar. That's how they manage everything. They're talking to people all day long. And if they're not, they need to be talking about how they could talk to people or taking action how they could talk to people. Uh, Zoom or Google Meet. I like Zoom. It's better. Uh, Google Meet is pretty decent. Uh, it's free. So that's good if you want to save 45 bucks or whatever a month. Uh, Slack channel is my favorite for team communication. I mean, our Slack channel blows up when a sale's made, bing, when a contract is signed, bing, whenever a lead comes in, bing, whenever a uh, strategy session or we call a sales calls book, bing. That, that is just like so fun and people can feel the energy uh, because Slack uh, is, it keeps people connected and brings a good, healthy competition, uh, which you only need a few sales guys to do that. And once you have that, you're like, all right, let's bring more people into that environment. It's a lot of fun. And then milestone centric sales process. You need that tool. I have an online sales course 
actually, I think Arcom members have a great deal on that. You guys get uh, a, a discount. We've got a barter agreement. So what you guys need to do is you need to get our online course and learn how to sell, to learn our sales process and learn the mindset to be effective and build a sales organization because that is that is a lot of fun. We can build a sales organization. You really are starting to open up and unlock some things. Um, what was the last one here? Uh, yeah, there's some other great softwares out there. Eagle View, I mean, Hover, Company Cam, I mean, Sumo Quote, Job Nimbus, uh, Pipe Drive, there's a lot of systems. Um, I'm, oh, I have a, I'm pretty good on this slide. The last one for the door to door is not my, my jam, but I talk about the inside sales process. Sales Navigator, Zapier. I use Seamless AI. Our team is, if you're going to cold call people, which I like to cold call, I like our, listen, you, relationships can only go so far. And if you're not physically able to meet with people, you're going to have to prospect. It's just the bottom line. So you got to run ads or prospect and brand position, brand organically. So prospecting is where it's at. If it's inside sales, really good for companies who want to leverage email, social, and phone and Zoom. I think inside sales is fantastic. You can use Seamless. Seamless, uh, it does a great job at actually scraping the internet with artificial intelligence to give you their actual, uh, their actual cell phone and Facebook and LinkedIn and email. And then you can use Vidyard or Loom for personalized video messages. That's free. Close IO is a CRM we use for inside sales teams. And we can actually, you can email, text, call, send custom messages, do automatic sequencing. It's so powerful. So our team uses that and they're basically a remote sales team, which is basically an inside sales team that's broken up uh, in people in their home. And so when you're in close IO, what you can do is you can send out emails like eBooks or something valuable for your prospect to purchase and consume. And then they're able to, uh, you're, you're able to see who opened the emails and then you can text and call them and, and really like have a really personalized message. And that starts to generate a lot of interest because you're using case studies, you're connected, you're using it smart and you're able to call and text. And it's not like you're just cold blasting. I mean, you're sending them something valuable. If they opened it and consumed it, then it's really kind of warm at this point. It's not really cold because they know who you are. And if you're running good ads, they rent, they see your, your, your branding. Um, and then smart reporting I use for analytics with close IO, uh, chart mogul. I mean, QuickBooks does this a little bit, but I like chart mogul a lot because you're able to, you know, pull where leads came from and look at numbers, uh, more linearly. Your CRM should be able to do a decent job of that as well. But, uh, it's, it's a way that it's a tool that we like, and I look at it every week, especially trying to see our growth. Um, also, customer testimonials and case studies, you definitely want to use those, and that could be YouTube, it could be a WordPress uh, post with an embedded YouTube video, just like a couple screenshots of something that they said was great. Anything that shows proof and evidence that someone has gotten great results from you. Um, Calendly is a, is a tool you use for discovery call bookings, and that's a lot of fun because they can book it, and then you can have it automated into Slack when a discovery call is made. And, uh, and I might, if I have a few minutes, I could probably show you guys a couple of things I'm talking about, like Slack, for example. Um, so it's a lot of fun. We use all this stuff is all these little teeny tools just add up to a beautiful machine. Um, there's some outside sales stuff like sales rabbit and, um, drones and, you know, hail trace and things like that. I know there's not a lot of hail up there. This is, uh, I use this for another presentation as well, but, uh, yeah, email services, Google maps. Um, so I'm going to show you a quick screenshot of like our Slack channel right here. So we have, so here's an example of Slack. So I have like our lead channel. So I have all these leads getting generated right now. This is all today, man. This has been fun to watch today. We've had probably 20, 15, 20 leads today. Probably not that many, maybe 12. And these are all companies that we're generating through we're actually at a trade show in Houston so it's not a trade show it's a it's a conference and so people are booking these these contractors right on the spot because they're using Calendly right the Calendly software we've routed Zapier to automatically generate a message in the lead channel it takes about five minutes to build it once it's built it's like boom 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 so you could see uh somebody's like Stuart you know giving Stuart some uh some love because Stuart is knocking them down right now he's look that's like three meetings boom boom it's four meetings right 
So you could see that's pretty exciting. And then outbound, when they're prospecting uh, through email, you could see that somebody is like Skylearn, right? Somebody, Brian Case booked what we call a disco. Disco is uh, short for discovery call. So that's like um, somebody said, yeah, I'm interested. And it's not a full presentation, but it's a discovery call. So that's a lot of fun. Um, and then when sales are made or things like that, payments are and, you know uh, are made. Oh, interesting. Let's see who that is. Um, yeah, so it's a lot of fun. And so what we do is this just showed sales are made. Here's another closed deal, uh, closed deal, closed deal. So when you have the CRM tied to Slack, it just really makes a great environment. There's a lot of other things as well that we could share. But you guys need to step it up because there's technology that's not rocket science to set up and you can get some help. And when you do, it just changes the game. So not sure if anybody's ready to step up your sales game, but uh, you could continue to rely on humans to do things slowly and make mistakes. And, and typically, if you can't do things quickly, or you just won't do them at all, right? So you're just missing out on some of the energy and some of the tasks that can be done that create a great culture uh, and get you results. You know, people need certain things to happen and milestones to achieve before they're ready to buy. So you can leave it completely to natural order or you can automate it or you can sales train it. There's some other ways like train the human beings, recruit the human beings and make sure the machine uh, supports that as well, which is so fun. And if it needs to be done more than once to give you what you need, then it needs to be automated. Remember that rule. If we need if we're doing this over and over and over again and I can't automate it, then I have to keep doing it nat organic or uh, naturally. But if I can't automate it, then I ought to because it's something that we're already showing we're doing in our process. And uh, that's a lot of fun. So that's it for us, guys. Uh, again, my name is Ryan Groff. Sales Transformation Group is our is the company. We were working with a lot of companies out there who want to grow. We're always innovating. We're always implementing. We're coaches. We're comrades. We're Think of us as friends. We're not gurus or hardcore. We just want to help you grow. We want to challenge you create a great environment. We've got a great community of roofing contractors across the country. And we just got our first Australian company. They're a, a painter. So it's not just roofing. So we're really, uh, we're really growing. We have a lot of fun. We do things with a high degree of integrity. Um, we're here to serve. Uh, if you guys are interested, we're, I'm, I'm not going to give you a bunch of free consulting, but I will jump on a call with you guys, or you can jump on a call with our team. We can ask you a lot of questions. And if we think we can help, we'll make you an offer with what our uh, program looks like and we'll give you a discount to join us. But you gotta be committed and you gotta be ready to grow and you gotta be ready to take some action. We're helping a lot of people do that. If you wanna learn more, great. But for uh, it was a relation to, to uh, our call, I am going to stop sharing. And yeah, if anybody has any questions for me, I would love to answer those. Uh, first question, in regards to Seamless AI, have you used Zoom Info? Just wanting to see what you think as I am up for renewal in February. I have not tried Zoom Info yet. Um, Seamless is solving the problem for us right now. Okay. And that looks like that is right now the only question that I have. Is there anybody else that has any questions for Ryan? Anyone? 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 That looks like the only one. I was curious what you consider to be the best CRM program. Um, depends on what for. For sales, uh, I really like Close.io. I like Pipedrive a little bit. Um, I never actually used Salesforce as big as it is, um, but I know it's very impressive. I have some customers that use it. Um, but it's something that is pretty pricey and you gotta be all in on it. Um, but close IO, I'm loving it so much. We we're getting a lot of value from it. It's not going to do any inspection reports or anything like that. It's not going to schedule crews. That's, that's a roofing tool. There's a lot of those out there that are good. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping that they continue to get better because I feel like roofing softwares can be pretty outdated. I mean, I launched a roofing own CRM company for four and a half years and that's, and I got out of that game because we weren't moving fast enough and we weren't able to do what other companies were able to do. So that's why I became a coach. So um, yeah, that would be my answer right now. I mean,
Um, thoughts on Sage Contractor 100? That's an accounting program, right? I'm Sage not 100. sure. Yeah, I think that's an accounting program. Um, yeah, accounting is, is Sage is good. You might be able to estimate out of there too, I believe, but uh, the edge is definitely the one that I know does the best job at estimating commercial estimation. Have you ever used Market Sharp? Yeah, that's that's uh, from what I understand, pretty pretty rinky dink like residential CRM. Okay. Sorry, uh, if that's language. Maybe not the best way to describe it. I don't know very many really high growth contractors that are market sharp users let's just put it that way okay do you know if uh, close io is able to sync with fcs or data forma yeah it's not that close io wouldn't it's fcs and data forma aren't integrated with anything really it's unfortunate that's something that i'm frustrated with that I, I, they need to open up their apis so um they just got to do it i guess they go ahead Oh, I guess Sage 100 is job costing, schedule, and payroll. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm a sales trainer. I know some things about those those other softwares, but definitely a I, a growth growth in sales is my is my jam for sure. Okay. Yeah. This questions? one's in, this question's yeah. in Spanish, and I don't know what it says. So, yeah. um, sorry. All good. Um, and I think that was the last one. All right. Listen, guys, our call, we have a discount for our call members. So if you're high growth uh, or at least wanting to at least grow some and just upgrade uh, your company through sales development, um, please reach out to us. We'd love to um, support you, coach you. We have some Washington companies that are, we're we're seeing some some nice results with. Always want to do better, but um, yeah, if you're if you want to be competitive and want to do better and increase your margins and shorten your sales cycles and grow more volume and um, and make it you know make it fun to produce more work, uh, it's always the next challenge. And you can make more money. Then please reach out to us. We'd love to serve you. And. Ryan's company is part of our Member Resource Advantage Rewards Program, which is in the Members Clubhouse on our website. So you just use your member password or the coupon code you used for um, tonight to log in there and you can see the deals. And if you need help uh, getting a hold of Ryan, just call the office and I'm happy to put you guys together yeah. and um, make it all happen. He does a great job and we're happy to have him as a partner and we so appreciate you being here tonight. I thank know you're you. busy and it was a real push for you. So thank you very much. All good, honored to be uh, able to serve at the biannual. So everybody, thank you. Tracy, thanks for having me. I'm gonna jump off. Does that sound good? My, my dismissed. Good. Thank you uh -huh. guys. Let me know if I can I could serve you. Thank you, bye. Bye Ryan. And just real quick before we um, close up tonight, I just wanted to let you know that we are still planning a COVID friendly um, drive through gala with more information to come in the next week or so. And we have some new deals in our member resource advantage rewards area. And you will be seeing a um, really great quarterly newsletter coming your way in the next couple weeks. And finally, I wanted to mention that there are some handouts that you can download tonight um, that are here on um, ready for you in PDF or JPEG that you can download and print out for yourselves. And um, I also wanted to thank Eagle View very, very much for sponsoring tonight's um, virtual biannual and I wanted to thank everyone for coming. I know that it's a busy time with elections and kids out of school and everything else that's going on and I just wanted to thank you all for being here tonight. So with that said, um, I think that um, we're ready to close up. If you have any questions, concerns, feedback, please email me. It's Tracy, T-R-A-C-E-Y at rcaw.com and I'll be happy to answer anything that you have individually. 
Thanks again for coming and have a great night.